Hey guys, how is everybody doing doing today? Yeah, uh, it's been a long day for me. Had a lot of Christmas celebrations, a lot of like going around and giving gifts to each other and so on. And I'm a bit sick, but I think we are going to pull this presentation off in a pretty nice way. So don't worry, everybody. I have been going through all of these hey, posts. All right, I'm hearing my own voice. Yeah. So I have been going through the post in the main Facebook group and the like the sad part is that yes, you know, education loan is, is a problem, but again, not many people are coming forward to actually explain what the procedure is. So I thought, let me just prepare a presentation again. Let me come a bit to this side. Uh, yeah, let me prepare a presentation again and so that I can show you how exactly the things work because again, this is not my field of expertise in the sense that no i don't work in a bank and i don't want to either so like that's that's uh, completely fine for me but to at least give you some starting steps with which you can directly start taking action you can go to the bank you can inquire with them and just see what kind of next steps await you before we go into the presentation let me just greet you folks, Indrajit Patra, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. A big fan, Shitaj Kumar, thanks man. Uh, Soam Chimote, Soam is here, I'm doing great. All right, that's really nice. So from which cities are you guys joining in from? Like you, ev like everybody knows, this is my favorite question. Uh, let, me do let me know and then let's start slowly and slowly with the presentation it's like to be honest it's fun for me like to make these presentations every now and then and like it's a practice for me it's a weekly practice to make a presentation so that i can show you guys something nice and actually teach you something so like i'm 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 selfish in the way that yes i'm going to actually you know practice my own presentation skills and when at the time whenever i'm having like any kind of presentations in the university then it's fun for me so Shitaj is joining from Chandigarh, from Srinagar, Nagpur, Jammu, Ahmedabad, Chandigarh again, Surat, Aditya Mehta, Mumbai, Yash Mistri, Mumbai, Raul, Rao, Bangalore, I am Saxena, Mumbai, uh, Raghav Chebolu, uh, Hyderabad, then Daksh Jain, Gurgaon, Sanjay alone, Anandpur man really nice so it's like most of the times what i see is it's generally still like focused on the major cities in india and i find it sad that like people or like students who are in the smaller cities they aren't really like that much focused because i understand they could have their own financial constraints but maybe after this video that there's a thing out there and you can share it with other friends or anybody who wants to learn more about how to come to germany when they don't have any money and even when they don't have anything to offer as a collateral all of those things we are going to discuss in this video and you can just share them and you can tell them that look this is also a possibility so uh, thanks a lot uh, everybody for joining in from all of these different cities let's have a really nice time for the next one hour um, 30 minutes i'm going to talk about the education loans for studying in germany and then afterwards again this is the last live session of the year so i'll be giving you a last discount for the complete guide to studying in germany we already have 115 students there so if anybody is thinking of taking their first steps to studying in germany i would love to have you in my course and actually you know start the process with you guys there um with that out of the way let's start the presentation now for those who are joining in for the first time my name is Bharat Chaudhary and I am doing my master's in international management and engineering from Technical University of Hamburg and this is the ask your questions session 27 so we already had 26 previous sessions and a lot of other live streams in the Facebook group and on Instagram and so on um, but on YouTube, this is our 27th one, and this is going to be about education loans for studying in Germany. So the agendas are going to be, the topics are going to be, first of all, student loans. So what are the bank interest rates and what is the eligibility? 
um then afterwards we are going to slowly move towards the next topic which is going to be the types of student loans so what kind of different student loan types you have um do you need to provide collateral or do you can you get the loans without any kind of collateral and so on uh, prakash singh um thanks a lot for your super chat as always required documents so that is again another important document uh, an, another topic that you need to understand first of all what kind of documents are all necessary to be able to apply for education uh, loan and a very important thing here is that everyone should understand that the loan process it's highly diverse that means some banks might have the process that i'm telling you here in this presentation and some other banks or some other nfbcs they can have some kind of variation of the process that i'm showing you but in the core this is going to be the process that most of the institutions or banks are going to follow when they are giving you any kind of education loan required documents then we will talk about the repayment part and then i'm going to take up your questions um whatever kind of topic you're having and again like to be out of the way none of this is legal advice so just always talk to your banks because like i said already it is going to be different for everybody but these whatever you are going to learn in the next 20 minutes are going to be the defining steps which will make you go through the process a bit faster and then you just have a bit more idea of how you can you know tackle um, the next few steps because once you have the admit you know the next part comes having a blocked account and although the blocked account amount isn't that much so if i just calculate it here for you 8640 euros and i think we multiply it with 80 you have 6 lakh and 91000 rupees so like for a middle class family this is something this is somewhat of, somewhat of a money that is generally always saved in the savings so if you absolutely need it and you don't have any kind of you know loans or something and if your parents had been always very careful about the kind of money they are saving where they are saving this would be the money that you would always have and this is the exact money that you have to show for student visa for germany right not 40 lakhs in like in us not 20 lakhs 30 lakhs none of that only 7 lakh rupees um yes yeah, so everybody who's asking questions still in the um, live chat i'm not going to respond to them right now i'm all only going to respond to them once the presentation is done um all right so let's let's start with the student loans now so first of all you have to really decide on the amount of student loan that you want to take would you like to take the 7 lakh rupees that i showed you here so like this 691 200 is um, almost your 7 lakh which is going to be your blocked ac account requirement for the first year now again for the people who are still unaware ab about the documents required for germany's student visa i'm going to put this link in the description too so that you have an idea of what exactly is needed so like don't go crazy with just finding all kinds of different documents that you can submit that is absolutely unnecessary okay so this is the exact list these are the documents that you need to apply for the visa and that is pretty much it that is where it stops so no more drama no more like hey can i go from uh, can i uh, submit this document that document no this is the exact list you can find this checklist on the uh, german embassy's website and also for the blocked account things um you can just directly click on that link there and then you will be redirected to this federal foreigners office page and there you can see what kind of different services are um, different institutions are offering the blocked account so once you have the admit letter you will apply for the loan which will be 8640 euros or the equivalent amount will be 7 lakh rupees 7 lakh or 14 lakh because for the next year you also have to show the blocked account in some cities in some cities you can also show the normal funds so that is something you have to decide already so like would you want to apply for 7 lakhs and just come to germany by showing the 8640 euros or do you want to apply for 14 lakhs that means for both of the years 
um again once you have decided on that you have to see which kind of bank provide loan for some particular institute because it is not it is not that prevalent for germany that some banks have some kind of a uh, preferred institutes list that is not there it it is not the case because most of the times for doing that they need to find out the rankings so all right rwth tum some others could be really reputable institutions but because the number of students going to germany isn't as high as going to uk or us or australia they don't have these kind of lists so this is again some kind of an uh, uh, some kind of a shady area some institute institutes might uh be some loans some banks preferred um you know on the preferred list but most of the times it doesn't really matter it matters in the sense that yes you will have it easier to apply for the student loan and not get a rejection afterwards but in general you just have to take care that it doesn't matter even if your institute is not on the preferred list you can always apply and you can always show some collateral uh for the secured loans and if it's an in- unsecured loan then again you you can use your connections most of the times because even that works um i've talked to a lot of different students about their experiences and i'm going i'm also going to tell you that afterwards here so eligibility criteria criteria is something that you have to check and will vary from like this nfpc to nfpc so for example for hdfc credula if you just go here and you see what is the eligibility borrower must be an indian co applicants must be indian citizens co borrowers must have an account in india now then co applicant requirements blah 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 and then it goes on for the minimum um minimum loan amount rate of interest and all of those things so this is for hdfc now hdfc credula now if you look at avance this is another uh and nfbc so here you would go and you keep going down you will see the eligibility criteria again so here it's the student taking the loan must be an indian citizen 18 years old or above there must be a confirmed admission in the institute before final disbursement of the education loan so that you so you can get it approved but before they put the funds in your account you should have the admit letter so like if you know you would already be struggling with the situation it would also make sense that you are able to directly just approve the loan first and then afterwards you are able to do the final or like request the final disbursement of the education loan loan once the admission letter is there for you then comes the co borrowers things then courses what kind of courses are preferred and blah blah and then the documents required so like all of these things you can always ask these nfbcs directly now so right now it's all about the nfbcs and the reason that i'm talking about them is only because the normal banks your sbi bank of baroda and all of those they don't really have the information set up in front of you in a simple manner for them you have to go many branches can have different um your education loan procedure and you just have to inquire at the local branch there but for the nfbcs or in the loan procedure for general th- these are the guidelines that i'm showing you right now so you have to check the eligibility criteria for minorities so christians muslims or uh, some other um, uh, parsis and so on and even sex you have this pradesh pardo scheme from the ministry of minorities from the government of india so you can check it out um then you also need to have some kind of security so like this part is not compulsory you can have security that means collateral and you cannot have security and in that case you have to apply for the um for this other one so like unsecured loan interest rates can always vary so it could go from 9% all the way up to 13% or even more so like just be careful about what kind of uh loan you're applying for and already ask what is the final sum that you will have to pay in the end because that is extremely important 
then you can get loan through german banks some people say it but that's really not the case because this last option is only true for the people who are already living here since one year or more or who are already studying here so bafug is generally what the german students apply for when they don't have enough funds to study and shufa is again something which um which builds up your credit score and then tells you afterwards if you're eligible to apply for a loan to study in a university or not so like the last option isn't a possibility for you for most of you and that's why we will cross it away now again if you have you know if you haven't really thought about this whole thing and your admit came and you don't have a lot of time then you just have to take care that for the banks the this whole education loan procedure it can go up to one month if you know somebody if you have a relative or any kind of known person in the banks then it could be easier for you it could go faster for you but generally it always takes a bit longer so the processing time for banks it's a bit longer but if you really need the money really fast then you can go with the nbfc's the non banking financial corporations and there you have the processing time from 5 5 days to 15 days or even like less now the types of students loan like i said so generally there are always two kind of um your student loans one is with collateral and another one is without collateral collateral is any tangible property which has some value which the banks can use in case you are, are you aren't able to pay the loan back to the institute or the bank from which you took the credit so like first when you actually decide and you end up deciding on what kind of student loan you want to take so again the previous thing is really important that is the processing time like if you need the money fast go with the nbfc but if you have some time and you want lower interest rate then go with the banks so again you have collateral or non collateral that is another thing that you have to decide and then afterwards here we talk about the interest rates so interest rate on a secured loan in a bank is generally less and a bank could be something like sbi or even bank of baroda now then interest on an unsecured loan that means where you are not showing any collateral or you are not able to show any collateral there um the interest rate is a bit more and the only bank which offers that is the access bank so more than 7.5 lakhs unsecured loan is is only provided by access bank in india then comes your interest not interested i think i made a mistake here interest on a secured loan in an NB nfbc that is going to be your hdfc credula and then afterwards interest on an unsecured loan in an and again i think i made mistakes here again so nbfc is incred or avance so the two things that i showed you um and then afterwards comes your decision and documents so like once you have gone through all of these different things once you have decided how much time you have if you want to go for the collateral loans or um, secured loans or the unsecured loans and then you have decided what kind of bank you want to go for you just have to make a decision all right let me go to this bank you can also like already ask and inquire with different uh, institutions so like sbi bank of Baroda, access bank hdfc credula incred avance all of these and then in afterwards once you have inquired once you have seen the rates and everything then you can choose the right bank for you generally if you have time like i said sbi and bank of Baroda would be nice if you don't have so much time then avance has good service and this hdfc credula it also has good um it like students claim they have good experiences from them now again these required documents are always going to be different so for example let me just pull it out here so i've showed all right education loan form academic records and mark sheets proof of admission expense sheet of that course provided by the university so for german universities that is not really the case so in that scenario you can show the visa you can show the visa doc like this visa checklist which mentions 8640 euros or you can get a document from the university so like it really completely depends on you 
Then you need photographs, you need the bank account statement of borrower, so whoever is taking the money, then statement of assets and liabilities of the co-borrower, so what kind of, you know, maybe property he has, um, which is non-agricultural, and what kind of loans he has already taken. So on the basis of that, they will decide a credit score. And on the basis of that credit score, they're going to see if it would be like if it would make sense at all to use the score borrower as a guarantor. Then proof of income, if person is working in India, then income tax returns of the last two years, then property documents or any kind of immov immovable property. So that is uh, pretty much what you need. And here, like, for example, in statement of assets, it's not just like property always. So it could also be your shares or um, any kind of like stocks that you have bought and so on. Like all of those will be coming in assets. No? So again, all banks have different requi uh, document requirement for applying. So you need to confirm with the bank first. And I can show you a very easy example here. So for example, if you go at advance and where is the document checklist? I go at the go to the document checklist. So you see like how many documents you need. So you have the applicant, then the co-applicant, then the additional co-applicant and the guarantor. So like there are four different people involved here. In HDFC Credula, if you see at the supporting documents required, you will go and you will see again fully complete application form, photos, photo ID, residence proof, academic documents, proof of admission, bank statements, income proof, um, income proof of co-applicant, immovable property documents and so on. So again, like these are all different things and you can just check it uh, from the institute where you want to apply the loan with. So again, like really important, the one thing that I'm telling you here is like never be hesitant whenever you're asking for something because you would be actually ending up paying them money. So if you're paying them money and they want the money from you, you can they can even just answer some of your questions. And because they want you to take their service, so the better the better customer service you get, well, most of the times that's not an option in India because, well, we just are too many people. So customer service is almost non-existent in India. But still, just try. So like try asking them and most of the, most of the times they're going to respond to you in a nice manner. Like especially the... NBFCs because they are private and they want money from you and they are actually giving more interest rates. So if you talk about if we if we go to the slide back here, if I go to this loan type slide, now if I talk about interest on a secured loan in a bank, this could be just somewhere around like nine to ten percent. So like that could be the interest rate generally. Then if you go for this interest on a secured on an unsecured loan in a bank, that could be somewhere around, you know, like 10 to 11 percent, even 12 percent. Sometimes the similar is true for here. Then in this one, it can go up to 13 percent or even more. No? So like you just have to see the main thing to ask is what is the exact amount you would be paying afterwards. Then comes the repayment part. Now, so like once you have applied for the the loan and everything and it gets accepted and you have the admission letter, then you can give the admission letter and you have the final disbursement of the money into your account with that money, like that money you have to then transfer again to a blocked account. So that could be the blocked account from Coracle. They just launched it new. Um, you transfer it there. Now with help of some kind of Forex transfer and that's it like the story is done for them, then um, many banks might ask you for some kind of, you know, how you are, how well you are doing during your master's or something. And that is always some kind of sword hanging on your head because, well, you took money from somebody and they want to know if you are doing well, if you're doing good in your master's and if you would be able to pay the loan back afterwards. So this is something which is really important. You always have to think about the repayment part because even though it is possible that yes, you know, you do your master's and you might not find a job like th that is a possibility in the case when you don't do anything during the two years of your master's, then of course you can't like expect the companies to give you a job if you don't know anything, if you don't have any kind of skills which the companies can use. And this is also the reason 
why I focus so much on this channel about education because like these processes you will get through them now uh, trust me you will get through them and these are not difficult ones hundreds and thousands of students do it every single year so even though it feels like hey this is a new process and I might be the first person who is doing any of that because honestly I used to feel like that when I was going through the whole visa process and applying to the universities and stuff and I was like man there hasn't been any other person who did that or something or like what is going on because there were no Facebook groups at back at that time and like YouTube and stuff like there was nobody making those videos I came here I thought all right you know there was no there was no information there and there wasn't there wasn't anybody who was bridging this information properly so i was like all right you know once i'm in germany i'm going to make this database of all of the information that students can need so that was the thing for me so even though you feel like you might be alone in this process that's absolutely untrue there are a lot of students who have gone through the process and you just have to reach out you just have to approach different institutions you have to approach different people approach different students and you will know that most of the struggles that you might be facing with the other students could be similar and if you reach out to them and they have some experience to share with you or like some tips to make your life easier then you would thank yourself for opening your mouth and just you know asking about a, asking a question or just writing them a message so again a very important thing just always know that all of these processes that you're doing right now these are the easy ones the doing the, like doing your masters and then afterwards afterwards finding a job and doing your masters properly learning the skills so the presentation skills or report writing skills or how to actually you know network with people and so on those are the skills you will be learning in your masters those are extremely important if you and if you don't spend time in that it is going to be absolutely useless for you to actually have done your masters. Once your master is done, comes the time of repayment. So repayment is also called these grace periods. So for the time when you don't need to think about paying back the loan. So if you got a job within the first year of graduation, so you can like re resist on the loan from one to six months. Now, again, it is different for every single institution. Now, if you go for HDFC, I don't know if they have mentioned it here already. Um, but the repayment parts you, you can find. So, for example, in HDFC, as far as I remember, it was three months. So, like, after three months of you getting a job, you have to start, um, you have to start the repayment of the loan. If you are still unemployed after a year of graduation, it doesn't matter. Like you will have to start the repayment of your loan anyways. Um, and then you also have to check. I think like this is not a point which would come in the end. But already here, even at the loan types when you're deciding one, always inquire. Always absolutely inquire if you are paying a compound interest or a simple interest. Because even though it might feel, feel like, all right, you know, I take the loan of 10 lakh rupees. And then afterwards, at the rate of 10%, I might just have to add 10,000 10, rupees on top of it. Well, that might not necessarily, necessarily be true. Like 1 lakh rupee on top of it, that might not necessarily be true. Because the major problem is, many of these banks, they have these stars mentioned every single time they write an interest rate. So you have to talk to the bank and you have to actually ask them what exactly what exactly is the final amount that I will be paying afterwards? Um, you know, some of these banks also have these education calculators or something. So um, SME loans, resources, I think in the resources or something. And you can just type in the calculator and they have different kind of things. All right, you know. Um, all right. So some other stuff that you can just read and, you know, just really um, burn your brains. And actually, these people, these advanced people, they have been pretty active everywhere, funny, in a funny way. But anyways, like, I, I didn't really hear anything from them till now, because I did hear from this other company called Gyanthan. They wanted to collaborate or something, but I wasn't really sure how the company is and stuff, so I didn't really do anything there. But hopefully, um, if I do find some kind of, you know, third parties which I wa which want to collaborate and stuff, I will definitely let you guys know too. 
but till that time you actually have to just directly approach these institutes it's as easy as that honestly like they want your money na and you want to give them your money afterwards so they are going to be a bit more responsive check always like always this is hands down the biggest important thing like if you are paying the simple interest or the compound interest and what exact sum are you paying in the end don't move forward and don't proceed once if you don't know about those things so again like all of these things have would have already been cleared for you if you were in the in this online course complete guide to studying in germany and in the visa section in the visa processes part the second lesson is the education loan procedure for germany you can take a look at the course contents on my website the link is in the description and again so this is the last this is the last live session of the year so i'm giving another discount that i will be telling you at the end of the live session so that you can buy the course within the next 12 hours with that coupon code because generally i don't like it when yeah when you're selling something with below the value of that thing so people who are coming from google or facebook or some other things they can pay it on the original price but any body who is taking their time out to go through these live sessions you'll be getting 30% discount which i will be telling you once this session is done so again let me just tell you a bit about about my course you have lifetime access to to this course so anybody who is in 12th 11th doesn't matter in what grade he is or even like bachelor's first year second year third whatever you have lifetime access to this course so if you're applying for bachelor's or if you're applying for masters or even phd afterwards you can always use the information which is provided in this course now again it also has personal mentoring in the sense that every two weeks you have live sessions where you can ask your questions any kind of doubts you have any kind of concerns you feel you can always share them in the live session in the private facebook group that we have then again this is an exclusive community of more than 100 plus members so we have 115 enrolled members at this time in the facebook group um, in this online course which are also active on the facebook group and again you have support during your application visa pro application procedures visa procedures after arrival in germany and so on and just it doesn't take a long time you can just go through the course cu curriculum and you can just see what kind of information you will be getting afterwards and i can definitely assure you of the quality and any kind of need or any kind of help you need afterwards well it's all on me it's it's my responsibility uh to clear whatever questions you have and like it doesn't just deal with the processes of like application and visa and stuff it also talks about what are the processes after arrival in germany gives you the exact documents exact links then how you find a part time job then importance of learning german why is networking important in germany and so on then how do you organize your first semester in germany because like i said a lot of people if you really want to come to this part you want to do the repayment part i think it is extremely important that you start figuring out how you would do your masters properly too because there are a lot of steps which can which you can do wrong so like how do the german university portals look like getting in habit of using calendars post admit scholarships to the students in germany the post admit scholarships actually help you with the repayment right so if you get some scholarships from some kind of institutes all of that i have mentioned in this uh, lesson here it becomes extremely easy for you to be able to repay that loan so for example in tuhs there are a lot of different institutions there's the deutschland stipendium then there are like private companies for example deutsche bahn for civil engineers lufthansa for mechanical engineers airbus also provides it bosch provides it if you talk about again electronics you have nxp semiconductors they provided even siemens provide these kind of scholarships and the scholarships range from 300 euros per month all the way up to like 800 euros per month so if you are saving that money that means you are able to just save the money or put the money aside for whatever loan payment you have to do afterwards right so like just making sure that you know all the information already is important so like how do you do how do you organize your lectures during the semester how to stop wasting time and start learning german should you know use notebooks or laptops for making notes because that's important when you're actually writing your semester and exams it is really important to understand um what way is easier is going to be easier for you to just recollect everything 
then how do you write reports and assignments how are the semester exam patterns and what are the emergency phone numbers in germany so like all of these these things and some others it's all um in this complete course for studying in germany you can take a look there all right then that was um in a closed facebook group with me absolutely important so like you have direct access to me there anybody who is enrolled so here's the part where you start asking your questions and i'll pull it up soon on the main screen also thank you for your audience who just came here for looking at the presentation this is going to be the last discount and it is going to be for 30 percent for the next 12 hours and this is the absolute complete course so like for bachelors for masters for phd it is not sold in sections or anything it is a complete course everything that you need to know is in this one single thing and with the coupon code big yt 30 you will be getting your 30 percent off discount for the next 12 hours let's have some nice um yeah let's have some nice interactions afterwards because the next live session that we are having in the course is for this sunday at 9 a.m cet so again we have this separate facebook group for that um i think i've mentioned it previously also and yeah the live sessions generally happen in this one so if you are already enrolled till the end of the week so like in the next 12 hours you get the offer but till friday you would be able to attend the course and afterwards uh, the live session all right then uh, let me pull up to the main screen and let's start answering your questions whatever questions you have all right so uh Kash kashi fazis ashombe is asking is it possible to get a loan without a co-applicant so uh, Kashi, it is sometimes possible in just very limited banks, but most of the times they are going to reject you if there is no guarantor, there is no co-applicant because they don't have the security that you are going to actually pay the money back. I am Saksana. Happy New Year, bhai. I am, well, thanks, man. Uh, the next live session actually I will be doing on my birthday. So like 1st January 2019 that is my birthday and it's funny that actually i decided to do the live sessions on wednesday so that we actually have the next live session on my birthday and then i will be actually pretty old i will be old enough to start my own mentorship program so i would be 24 and then i would feel like yeah you know gain some really nice experience and now it's time to share with you guys um lavina khatri lavina i have been actually seeing your comments on the hindi channel a lot uh, and also on alina's channel well Keep watching um, and thanks for your support. We love reading your comments. It's always really nice. Yash Mystery, what is the price for buying your course? So the price of the course is 150 euros, but with 30% discount, you get it for 105 euros, which is I think 8,000 rupees. Um, but again, you're investing for the entirety of your um, circle or your life cycle in Germany. So yeah, that's that. Lavina Khatri, my birthday is on 3rd January. Super nice. Adi style, sir, what about the university fee, if any? So, Adi, if there's a university fee, you can always get that additional amount with your loan. No? So, that is that. Because, like, there you also have proper documentation mentioned for it on the university's website that you have to pay this and this money. So, like, that much money can be added afterwards in the loan. Soham Chimote, bhai, I want to do language course. So Soham is another enrolled student in our online course. Bhai, bhai, I want to do language course and I will be requiring loan just for one year. So how do I start my repayment as after one year, I'll have to start my bachelor's. So Soham, in that case, your time of studying is not going to be just one year. It is going to be extended and it is also going to depend again from bank to bank. So in the NBFCs, it is going to show a bit less flexibility. You would have to start paying afterwards and in the banks, because if you have some collateral, it is going to be a bit more secure and you can you can negotiate the terms of repayment there. It is going to be, like I said, it is different for every single bank. So the most important thing is you just go to the local inst local bank or lo local institution which is going to offer you education loan and you just directly talk to them because it is going to be like 
insanely different. If I tell you anything here, it might not be useful for you at all when you just go there and you ask them something because, well, the thing I'm going to tell you here for the process in this case is going to be completely different from what the guidelines these different banks or these different non-banking um, financing corporations follow. So, um, Kashi Fazi is, Ashombe is asking, do you have any idea about Bauhaus University? I have applied for digital engineering, which is 20% civil and 80% computer science. So basically, I want to know about the job prospects. So Kashi Fazi, with that, you can completely forget your civil engineering part because um, after web engineering, digital engineering, and you know, I have seen this course and they have been marketing it everywhere. Like it's insane the amount of marketing this course is getting. Now, um, the 20% civil engineering part, you can absolutely forget because that isn't going to be there or isn't going to be useful for you once your master's is done. But the 80% CS part is actually going to be helpful for you because digitalization is something which is like getting insanely popular in Germany. And like just to show you that, um, like I told you, we I told you guys, I had this collaboration with the German Ministry of Energy and Economics, and I'm going to start uploading videos for that, man. I'm going to like, I will, I'm getting late in that too. So there I... Um, I interviewed these different hubs, uh, not like till now, I just interviewed the hub of logistics in Hamburg, but I interviewed these different startups there. So like you just see the expense of digitalization or how important digital engineering is just the way things are progressing or just the way things are taken seriously by the German government. So. In Hamburg, you have the logistics. In Berlin, you have the Internet of Things and FinTech. You have then Potsdam, this media technology. Um, then you have this logistics, Dortmund, and so on. And let me just show you the link here. Let me just pull it down a bit. So this is the dehub.de. So this is the website, and you can actually also find the contacts of startups. And all of this is really important. And to be honest, I'm going to make a properly a pr pure separate video about this because I think this deserves a lot more attention than it is getting right now. And if we are somehow, if I am somehow able to connect you, the young talent, to all of these different startups which are available in Germany, man, like it is going to be very easier for you to find a job afterwards or to be actually able to contribute um, in a meaningful way to any of these small budding companies. So again, DE Hub, um, like I said, this is the digital initiative. It's also written here. It's the digital network of all of these different uh, cities which have different clusters, different focus industries. And um, the digitalization part is only going to get stronger. It isn't going to get back. So, um, the uh, uh, more questions. Can you, D-Tech, can you make uh, a video on low grade? So again, I think for that, um, Akhil actually made a really nice video. So let me go to YouTube. I don't know where his, I'll pull this video up. Getting admit with, getting admit with low grades, just a second. And he made a really nice video and I have been preaching the same thing over and over again that it is extremely important for you to understand that you can get into German universities even with grades below 65%. You hear me, right? It's below 65%, but you have to come for the German taught programs. In that case, if you have grades as low as 65%, it wouldn't make sense at all to just come for the English taught ones because first of all, you're not going to get the admit just a second low profile that i'll pull up that video and then you can just take a look at that i'm going to um put it so like this is akhil he's studying in tu chemnitz and actually he he w he uploaded some videos and then afterwards he stopped that i'm going to post it in the chat right now disha thakur my question did not get posted um disha try again or just tell me what the question was so Visha Nayak is asking, please make a video for masters in architecture in Germany. Uh, oh, sorry, not Visha, Viha. Uh, all right, Viha, um, 
I think this is this is a good enough topic for sure because um, the thing is most of the processes are similar anyways. The major difference here is again, like in India, you have bachelors for five years. No, um, in India, in, in Germany, we have the bachelors of architecture for four years. So the normal bachelors is three years. When you talk about the masters again, in masters, the last two semesters are heavily focused towards pure industrial training or just your uh, field work. So most probably, I think, I don't think I'm going to find somebody because I have been trying to find people for different fields since forever now, but nobody really comes forward and they're like, hey, all right, you know, let me help you with that video or let me share share, share my experience in this field. Um, but because none of that is going to happen, let me just make a video about that too. I'm, I will definitely do that, don't worry. Brother, please, uh, about my question, Nishan Lami Chane. All right, Nishan. Now I have to scroll up and look at your question. All right, it's 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 a bit too far. Uh, Disha Thakur, hello. I already have education loan going on for my MCA done in 2015. Can I get loan again to study in Germany? I have scored 7.5 uh, in GT IELTS. Can I get direct job or sh job or should I appear for academic IELTS? So Disha, first of all you only like universities only accept academic IELTS so, like general IELTS is not accepted and you, you you shouldn't even like try applying with that because it is not going to work out at the time of enrollment they would specifically require the academic ones and if you don't have that then it wouldn't work out as as long as um this education loan that you have already it is concerned most of these institutions which are offering you loan for studying abroad they actually take up they they're going to assess your credit score again most of the time it works out and you're also able to transfer the loan from one institution to the other one on some kind of nominal fee it's not nominal but like for banks again it's 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 nominal so like you can just check it out hdfc especially um hdfc credula especially mentions that it is allowed like if you want to take the loan from hdfc let me just pull up that um credula sbi education loan transfer so all of this information is actually available on the hdfc's website already um but because they make it so goddamn hard for students to actually find out that information on google maybe because they're just bad at their seo but anyways so like you are able to transfer the um, transfer the loan from one institution to the other one and then take another one for studying abroad based on the kind of academic record you have and the um, overall credit score that gets generated for you. Arjun Goswami, please start making videos on TU Delft, Netherlands. Arjun, why? Like, I'm, I'm doing videos for Germany right now. Soon we might move to Denmark, hopefully, if everything goes all right, then, um, yeah, then, then I can start making videos about that too. But this experience of studying in Germany, and hopefully if things go right, I'm going to do the PhD afterwards. If all of, all of those things work out, then like this exact channel is going to be a huge database for all of those information. Um, Rishabh Srivastava. Könnten Sie mir bitte über Berufschance nach Master in Deutschland erzählen? Rishabh, okay, so um, now, now I have to pitch my course here again. Like, I, I cannot help it. I have actually made this exact topic in the course too. So, like, what is the scope of bachelor's, master's and PhD in Germany? So, what kind of salary you can earn afterwards and what kind of fields you can work in and so on. So, like, all of those things are... Um, are already mentioned here but to come to your question so like what are the chances for uh, after masters in germany so first of all rishab um, in the traditional fields so traditional fields would be commerce law um, your chemistry biology and all of those if you don't have german proficiency like again it, it it's still easier for the technical sides or the science sides in the sense that yes chemistry biology all of those can still accept you without any kind of german proficiency but in law, in commerce, in management, if you don't have German proficiency, it is going to be get, it is going to be really hard to get a job afterwards. Now, so uh, that is that. But in general, because the unemployment rate is so low, it's three percent. It it is already evident that 
anybody who wants to do a job afterwards, who wants to do a job after their master's is complete, they are able to find a job. And they're able to find a decent job if they have at least B1 level of term and proficiency. Um, Deshat Thakur is saying, I have three plus uh, years of experience in IT. Can I get, get a job directly? So Deshat, I, I definitely think so because work experience is highly regarded in Germany. So like nothing comes as close to your work experience. I just really hate this chat box here. Like whatever gestures I'm making, it's not visible. So nothing, nothing really comes as close to work experience, anything else, um, anything else at all. So for example, for applying for masters, right? So if you're applying, then yes, you know, if you have bad grades, then the work experience is actually going to counteract that. But um, when you're applying for jobs, then essentially the work experience is something that the companies are looking for especially if you don't have um, good grades. Like, that's a very important thing to say. So, Kedar Paul is asking, there is a problem with getting loan for 8,700 euros when the entire course fee is less than 2,000 euros. This is one of the main problems. Please take a look at that. All right, Kedar, I'm going to actually ask students, but here's the thing, Kedar, I, I've talked to... I'm. Um, let me go in the Facebook group. And um, there are students, I talked to them, or maybe I will tag Apurf just a second because he actually took the loan too and it has been completely fine. Like for some people, it is a bit prob it is a bit problematic. For others, it's not. So I'm going to tag it here, tag him here, and maybe you can talk to him. Kedar, Paul. Yeah, this one. Yeah. All right, so you can just initiate the con conversation here because he has gone through the process and he has told me that, yes, like for many, many people, it's a bit difficult. But uh, in general, it really depends. He His university also doesn't have any kind of um, tuition fee, right? So like, again, whatever the semester contribution is, 300 euros, uh, 300 euros per month or something uh, sorry per semester but that's pretty much it so like you know just an initiate the conversation here on this tab and then uh, see what kind of information he gives you Rishabh Srivastava Liba Chaudhary sir ha bhai bol Nishan Lami Chane please I have everything I need can I get a bachelor course without German language test so Nishan um you can get a bachelor course without German language test, but the number of bachelor courses which are available are really less. They're like extremely less. So I wouldn't really take a bet on that as long as you're not having extremely good grades, right? So I would essentially really encourage you to actually, man, whenever you eat something, yeah, so I'm going to essentially tell you to just, you know, um, focus on German because that is extremely important. Once you know, um, once you have the B2 level, then you're going to apply to a lot of different student colleagues. You might get acceptance even for, you can get invited for Aufnahmeprüfung and then you can start studying your bachelor's. If you want to come for the English taught programs, then you have three options. You have, you can either clear the IITJE, then the second option is you can do one year of your bachelor's. And the third option is, again, uh, well, there is no third option. The third option is just like going through the student colleague. So after doing the first year of bachelor's, you cannot also like change your courses. So like that's also a pain in the ass. But anyway, so like you have the option of going in international English taught programs to Germany, but I would rather prefer the German taught one, especially for the bachelor's. <coughs> Insusceptible. Uh, Phoenix is asking is Munich uh, a good city to live in so in susceptible Phoenix yes like Munich is nice but um, I think the right wing sentiments are pretty dominant in, in southern Germany people say it about North Germany what I say is it's like worse for um, what people here like in North Germany say like it's worse in South Germany but evidently, East Germany is like still not such a great place to live for, uh, especially for foreigners. Things are changing. Of course, till 2040, German native Germans aren't going to be the majority anymore. Well, which is most of the time sad for a country because, well, it's their country. Um, 
but you can't really change this change in demographics who knows like maybe when merkel steps down as a chancellor like she's already no longer the party leader but once she steps down as the chancellor maybe things change af- there afterwards too umair kamar is asking bharat bro do you have pakistani friends there if yes then please interview them and guide us pakistanis too after all you have a huge fan base from pakistan too yeah umair like i don't have uh, essentially any pakistani friends like i have met some pakistani um, people like they are fun and like and nice to talk with and especially like because it's like you can communicate with pakistanis uh, in hindi and they can understand you completely and you cannot do the same with you know th- 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 many a times from uh, like maybe from south india or from east india and you have to talk to them with english so like most of the times i have a lot of fun like talking to them and also that like their language is like completely similar but i don't have any friends who are from pakistan so like unfortunately that is not going to be possible for me vinay parekh is asking scope of mechatronics um a scope of mechatronics in germany so when i like because things are moving essentially towards automation automation i said automation in the live stream and i absolutely hated that so like because things are moving towards automation like definitely you know mechatronics is one of the v- fields which is going to be in huge demand and there are actually some really interesting topics going on in the facebook group and you should take a look at that and i think one was regarding the number of jobs people are going to lose because of automation so just you know um uh, wait a second it was so like just keep yourself up to date with whatever current trend current topics are going on so like this is like 100000 jobs are going to be lost till 2035 a study suggested and that's that's also from the federal employment agency so yes there is some truth there but this is going to give rise to highly educated well i thought i was sharing the screen yeah so this is going to give a huge boost for the people who are actually already um you know who are in good qualified jobs so not even jobs who have studied good fields which are having some kind of future so for example if you learn right now how to be a driver well it's completely nonsense because if you go to this site which is like will robot take my job and i actually really like this site i i played around with that a bit So if you write driver um you will know actually how how likely it is for your job to be taken away by yeah by the robots so automation risk level so like there is a huge risk of automation and the rise in the taxi drivers and chauffeurs is going to go up by 13% but uh you know like robots are still going to take up essentially afterwards now if you talk about you know engineers so let me just write engineering in general so engineers have a really really low automation risk so you fall not as you fall in the category of uh an engineer and not as a taxi driver so like it's already really nice for you so again with that i'm going to close today's session guys uh thanks a lot everybody for joining in I have all of the information that you need regarding studying in Germany in this course and with the coupon code BIGYT30 you are able to get 30% discount for the next 12 hours the link is in the description and like I said just go through the curriculum you can take a look at what kind of information you are going to learn once you're inside because I would like the thing is I understand uh, and I would rather say like most of the information is free yes but you don't have the re- reliability re- reliability of the information and you don't have the structure to it so like this information has the structure once you go through it that is the only information and the only place you need to see anything All right then guys thanks a lot for watching thank you everybody have a great holiday and let's catch up on 1st January 1st January 2019 which is going to be my birthday and yeah see everybody there All right then guys like i said thanks for joining in have happy holidays and see you on 1st bye